Golden Plateau is its own little oasis up here. There just aren't very many places like this in the West, and this is a real, real gem. This is the top of the Rhone Plateau in western Colorado. We have an excellent deer and elk herd, mountain lions, bears, turkeys, grouse. It's a unique area. Hunting guide Keith Goddard has been bringing clients to hunt deer and elk here for years. Others come to fish or to enjoy the solitude. Well, the Rhone Plateau is kind of like a little island. Everything around it is, is uh, already leased and being developed. The Rhone Plateau sits in the middle of an energy belt leased for oil and gas development that stretches from New Mexico to Wyoming. Thousands of acres on top of the plateau, which is overseen by the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, are public land, love for hunting and fishing. But below the surface, there are huge deposits of natural gas available to energy companies for lease. What's really unique about the Round Plateau, these lands in particular, is the incredible density of energy beneath it. Many fear that energy exploration here, like other places across the West, could cause irreparable environmental damage. My biggest concern is the fish and the wildlife in here, that if they just come in and develop it, standard practice like they've used for years, it's, it's going to have a big impact on all of our wildlife up here. Drilling rigs, truck traffic, and well pads disrupt wildlife, according to some biologists. Increased activity in parts of rural Wyoming have impacted air quality. Spills of drilling fluids and chemicals are common, and many worry about a rare trout that lives on the Rhone. This is a genetically pure Colorado River cutthroat trout, unique to western Colorado. These ones up here on the Rhone are particularly rare. The Rhone was prioritized by the Bush administration for energy extraction, sparking a contentious debate over the push to drill on public lands. I always considered myself a conservative Republican, but after this gas play started and the way that Bush handled it, it was, let's get that gas out just as fast as we can, no questions asked. That's pretty much where I became a Democrat. Today, the Rhone is a test case for the Obama administration and Ken Salazar, the new Secretary of the Interior. There has to be a, a balanced approach, and it seems to me that um, not every single place in the United States of America should be opened up for oil and gas. But before Secretary Salazar took office, the Rhone had already been opened up. The part that's contested is pretty much everything you can see from that point right over the top of this post north to where it goes behind the hogback, which is the near ridge. That pretty well covers the whole Rhone area that was in the lease sale. In the waning months of the Bush administration, the Rhone Plateau was auctioned off for energy development at a record price of nearly $114 million. The sale came after years of controversy. When the BLM issued a draft development plan for the area, it was hit with a record 75,000 public comments, nearly all of them urging the protection of the top of the plateau. Today, Bill Barrett Corporation, a Denver-based energy company, owns the leases to the Rhone, and promises that it can develop the area without harming wildlife. Uh, we can have our cake and eat it too, that uh, the Rhone Plateau will be preserved with oil and gas development. There will be a short while while there's wells being drilled and, and the trucks will be driving by, but the, uh, the benefits far outweigh those minimal costs from my perspective. The benefits, as advertised by an industry group, are a fuel that burns cleaner than coal, local jobs, millions of dollars in taxes and royalties, and decreased dependence on foreign oil. But sportsmen and environmental groups have filed a lawsuit freezing any development on top of the Rhone Plateau. The suit alleges that the BLM failed to properly account for the environmental impacts of drilling. Before BLM makes a decision to drill an area for oil and gas, it has to take a look at what the environmental damage will be from that development and analyze uh, what's actually going to happen to the natural resources on the Rhone. For some in small towns like Rifle, near the Rhone, opening the area could mean a more robust economy. I think you'll find that here in the West, we're for it because it helps our economy, it helps the country to have uh, some energy. You know, the drill baby drill. <laughs> Others say too much has already been drilled here. It is one of the last pristine environments around here. And the longer we can stall off on drilling the Rhone, there are other places that can be drilled, the better. Those opposed to the development hoped that Secretary Salazar would stop the leases, as he did earlier this year with a set of controversial leases in Utah. My message to Ken is, you know, just keep fighting for what is right. 
But in late August, Salazar announced that his hands were tied. As uh, Secretary of Interior, I have to follow the law and will follow the law. The prior administration made decisions, leases were granted, and there's still litigation that's underway, and so the final outcome of what happens with the Rome Plateau is still unknown. If given the go-ahead to drill, Bill Barrett Corporation says its operation would be the most environmentally strict ever undertaken. How do we do that? Uh, first, uh, we'll respect the terms of the resource management plan that was developed by the BLM. By law, the company will have to avoid the cutthroat trout's habitat, stay off of steep slopes, and leave endangered plants undisturbed. Barrett also says it can go one better. Uh, we can commit to a conservation fund through commitment of a proportion of revenue or a per well commitment, uh, we can drive uh, environmental improvements around the Rhone. But opponents say that the only way to improve the Rhone is to leave it alone. Under the Bush administration plan, and that's, that's what Bill Barrett wants to carry out, they'll be drilling, or they're proposing to drill, thousands of wells on top of the plateau. Um, no matter how you, how you slice that, that's going to dramatically change the character of it, and, and what is now an area of wilderness-quality land is going to become an industrial zone. In the end, a federal judge will likely decide the fate of the Rhone. But back in Rifle, where booms and busts have come and gone, they know that Americans will always have an appetite for energy. They like electric in their house. They like running water in their house. They like to drive their fancy automobiles around. You know, they wouldn't have none of that crap if it wasn't for the oil and gas industry. So that's my opinion about it.